late start. It is my pleasure to introduce Andrew Dvedek, who will talk about the Zappa step product of a felt bundle by Groupoid. Uh, so take it away, Anna. Thanks. I suspect from the camera angle that it's better if I stay here rather than there. Uh, yeah, OK. So first of all, thank you for, oh, let me turn this. Got it. No. Here we go. Uh, let me thank Karen and Tristan for inviting me here. Um, it's my first time in Prague, so it's really, really nice to be here. Um, this is joint work with uh, Bo Yuli, who is currently at the University of Windsor. And I already apologize for probably mispronouncing the names. <laughs> So uh, just a, a quick disclaimer, um, everything that I'm going to talk about today will be true for locally compact health of Italian groupoids. Even Ital you can skip if you put a little bit more work into it. And we don't even need matching unit spaces, if you know what that means for Zappa Zep products. But just for simplicity, I'll only talk about discrete groups, because even discrete groups are going to be complicated enough. So just remember that if you listen to my talk and you're wondering why I keep saying group, also works for group points. Um, it's just a lot more heinous. Like everything just blows up with 20 more properties that you need to carry around. So this is going to be the outline of my talk. I am going to start by motivating the idea that we have behind the construction that we did. And for the construction, I will have to introduce you to fell bundles. But I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to try to give you as many examples as possible so that uh, it's not too technical, even though fell bundles are a very technical thing. Um, then comes the construction. So this little um, bow tie here is the denotes the Zappa Zep product. And I'm going to try to give you the construction that we have done in the C star world. And then if time permits, I'm going to talk about some primitivity theorems that we proved. Okay, so we start with two groups. I'm going to go very slowly because it's going to get technical very soon. The first thing we do with these two groups is we can just take their Cartesian product, make it a group by pointwise multiplication and pointwise inversion, and we get the Cartesian product group. Right? Everyone has seen this a bazillion times. If I take it a step back and assume more, namely that the group H acts on the group G, then I can ask for more and can construct a more interesting group. So just so you see this, um, I use blue for H acting on the left of G, and my little um, triangle points at the thing that is being acted on. And up here is also always a little reminder, right? So blue is the H action on G, left H action. Now that I have this action, I can construct a maybe more interesting group that actually encodes this action. So again, I take the set that is the Cartesian product, but now I actually encode it in the group structure by not just doing pointwise multiplication, but actually I pay this price, right? When H1 jumps over G2, I first have to act on it. And for this to remain a group, I have to adjust inversion, and then we get the semi-direct product, which all of you probably have seen at some point. Now I'll take another step back and ask for G also to act on H. So you see the different color, right? It's not a right action. This is red for some reason. And this time the arrow points or the, the triangle points in the other direction. And again, I want to make a group that now encodes both of these actions. So this time I use a little bow tie to, des to describe this group that I'm constructing. And it's purple because it's red and blue. And it encodes both actions. And basically, I'm just trying to take this formula and make it symmetric. So instead of just paying one price when I go from left to right, I also pay a price from going, for going from right to left. And likewise, the inversion then becomes symmetric. This is the formula that pops up for the inversion. Um, for this to be a group, I actually need to assume an additional thing. So associativity is not satisfied unless I have this property down there. So what this says is that if I act on a product, then it's not just acting on the two items. But in reality, it first acts on the first thing, and then a changed variant act on the second thing. Okay, And the same needs to be true for the other action. You don't have to remember this formula, because it's not going to be relevant for anything I'm going to talk about. Just remember, there is an additional assumption in the background. right? And likewise, if I replaced my groups by group points, there would be lots of small little assumptions about ranges and sources and stuff. 
Okay, and as I already alluded to, this new thing is now the Zappa Zep product of the two groups, and it's itself a group or a group point if you work with group points. So I hope all of this made sense and uh, motivates, at first of all, this um, algebraic construction. Now, um, these exist and have, have existed for a while, and these types of things are also exist in, uh, in C star land. So, for example, um, if you have ever looked into self similar groups a la Nikrashevich, they have these two way types of actions um, self similar actions on directed graphs and K graphs. And then, as I also mentioned, groupoids and even semi groups. And so, for example, there is this result by Brown, Lopez, Gramage, Gramage, Robertson, Whitaker. If you have two groupoids inside of a um, inside of a bigger groupoid, such that every element in the bigger groupoid can be written uniquely as a product of the other two, then this is actually a Zappa Z product. So there is some some decomposition theorem. And just as a as a little example, um, you've seen this sort of stuff before. Um, GLN decomposes as unitaries and, for example, upper triangular matrices. So just as a, as a small little example. I'm not going to be referring to this again. Are there any questions at this point? I think the, yeah, the so the um, results for groups is, is old, and then for group points, it was generalized. The um, construction for group points is even somewhat recent. So for groups, it's a long, an old thing, but for group points, it's quite recent. Yeah. Um, that's just the name of, of, I actually don't remember what it stands for. It's one of these linear algebra, first class linear algebra types of things. Yeah. Okay, so just remember we have, let me quickly move my video to the other side here, maybe. Um, or maybe I can actually just do this. Uh -huh. Perfect. So um, we took a group action and got the semi direct product group, right? And in this world, we already know what this should be in C star land. So we have a C star algebra A, and we have an H action on a C star algebra. And then we construct a new C star algebra that encodes this action. Right? So this is just the cross product. So um, you remember, my group is discrete by assumption. And so this C star algebra of continuous compactly supported functions from H to A is generated by things of this form. So it's something in A times some point mass as, at something in H, right? And then the formula that I used, if you look up here, this is the formula of my uh, um, semi-direct product group. I just copy that formula here and replace every G by an A. That's basically what happens, right? So here, if I multiply these two point masses, I just get the point mass, but I have to pay this price of the action. And likewise, inversion now becomes involution and the formula again is exactly the same. Okay, so we complete this to get the uh, cross product. And then the question is, if we know that the semi-direct product of, of groups becomes the cross product of C-star algebras, then what does the zappa -Zep product of groups become? And if we have it, or once we have a construction, what properties can, uh, like what properties that we know that the cross product satisfies, can we generalize to the zappa -Zep product in C-star land? Okay, so now I have to, unfortunately introduced Fell bundles. So I will repeat myself over and over. We start by saying the semi-direct product of groups is from a group action on a group. The cross product is from a group action on a C-star algebra. The zappa -Zep product of groups is built from two actions. So what should we have in C-star land? We need some sort of A action back on H, right? So you always need these two directions, but it doesn't really make sense to ask for the C-star algebra to act on the group. And so what we did instead is say we replace our C-star algebra by a Fell bundle that sits over the group G and then use the fact that G acts on H, okay? That's the idea. So now the definition of a Fell bundle in the discrete cases, a discrete group case is a little uh, nicer than the general situation, but it's just a bundle of Banach spaces indexed by the group that I wanna be sitting over. And it has two maps. It has a multiplication map and an involution map. Bible-wise, the multiplication map brings, uh, okay, there we go, um, brings uh, the, these two fibers over G1 and G2 into the fiber over G1 times G2. And the involution goes from fiber over G to fiber over G inverse. 
And then you ask for these this collection of Banach spaces to satisfy a whole bunch of properties that are C star like. So, um, for example, remember these are all Banach spaces, so they have a norm. So if I look at the norm of some B star B, so here this is the multiplication and the involution that I have given up here, then that guy's norm better be the same as the norm squared of the element itself in either of the two directions, right? So you have a whole bunch of properties like that. I'll give you some examples uh, on the next slide, I hope, um, so that you see why it actually makes sense to consider fell bundles. They're a really, really good item to be looking at for c star algebras. And I remember, remind you one more time, all of this can be done for locally compact house of group points. You don't need to have discrete groups. So given a Fell bundle, you can construct a C-star algebra out of it. Otherwise, I wouldn't care about this, right? And just like with the um, cross product, or maybe with a group point C-star algebra that you might have seen at some point, we take functions from G into B. But we are not just taking functions, we are actually taking sections. We want for a point G to land in the fiber over G. We want this continuous, compactly supported, and then we give this an involution and a convolution. And the formula, again, looks very similar to when you construct a group or group point C-star algebra. So here's the convolution formula of two such sections. And the involution formula really just inverts the element and then takes the involution in uh, on my cell bundle. Okay, so you take this, you complete it, and you get some C star algebra, which I'll denote C star B. And for anyone who's seen cross products or group C star algebras, there's more than one way to complete this thing. So usually there's, a, for example, a reduce into full version of this, but I'll always just think about the full one, and I'm not even going to talk about the norm. Just know that there is some norm that I can put on this and then complete it and get a C star algebra. Yep. Yeah, that's a very good question. For the the overall topology for, for this script B, um, in the situation where I just have a discrete group that it's sitting over, it doesn't matter. But if you have a group point, there, so there is no additional structure. But if you have a, um, a group point with its own topology or a group with its own topology, then you have to ask for it to be an upper semi-continuous bundle. Yeah, that's, that's why I dis use discrete groups. So there is a lot, like usually a fell bundle has like, you have to have 10 properties, including topological ones, but you're right. The bundle in, in of itself has to have a good structure. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to point out this formula for the convolution product looks a little simple, but the interesting stuff really happens here in this little dot there. So this looks, for example, more simple than a twisted group point Easter algebra convolution product, but it really isn't. Everything is hiding in this little dot there, okay? Okay, so I'll just repeat here exactly what I had on the previous slides. Fell bundle is a Banach collection of Banach spaces with some multiplication and some involution. And out of the sections of that bundle, um, I can make a C-star algebra if I give it a convolution product and an involution. And now for the examples. So why should you care about this? Why is this a good thing to look at? If I start with something really trivial, so I just take the trivial group and the bundle that is literally a C-star algebra, nothing else. This is a Fell bundle. Namely, by saying multiplication is the C-star multiplication, involution is the C-star involution, nothing interesting happens. And then in this case, the sections are just the algebra. It's just the algebra itself. And the C-star algebra of that bundle is just the C-star algebra itself, right? So a particular example of a Fell bundle would be just a C-star algebra. Now, maybe more interestingly, group C star algebras. So this time, instead of letting G be trivial, I let A be trivial. So I take some group, and for every, over every element of that group, I let the fiber be just the complex numbers. Nothing interesting. I define multiplication on my bundle as just multiplication of complex numbers. The only thing that I have to keep track of is what fiber I'm originally in. So I'm originally in fiber G1 and G2. I multiply them and I land in the fiber G1, G2. Still just the complex numbers, but I have to keep track of what fiber I'm in. Involution is just complex conjugation. And in this situation, um, the sections are really just continuous functions on G and the C-star algebra is the group C-star algebra. 
So fell bundle C-star algebras generalize group C-star algebras or groupoid C-star algebras. Now, one layer on top of that, I can also ask for twisted group C-star algebras. I do the same thing. I take a group, let the fibers just be the complex numbers. This time I also assume that I have a co-cycle. And if you don't care about two co-cycles, then just listen, stop listening for the next 15 seconds. But if you do care about twisted group C-star algebras, if you have a two co-cycle, you just change your Fell bundles multiplication by taking into account the two co-cycle, by taking into account the two co-cycle also in the involution. And in this situation, the C-star algebra of this bundle is then the twisted group C-star algebra. So it's more general than that too. Yeah. Oh, um, no. So, so um, two core cycles, twisted groups are just interesting in, in their own right. And at the moment, this has nothing to do with the Zappa Zep product. I'm just trying to motivate why group uh, or fell bundles are really the a, a good class of things to look at. So they are so complicated that you would might shy away from even looking at them, but really they generalize a lot of constructions in one go, which is why they're a really good thing to know about. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it is. So the co-cycle, um, the two co-cycle is just something on the on the level of the C-star algebra, not on the level of the group itself, in the sense that um, uh, it, it twists the C-star algebra, not really the group. Does that make sense? Okay, since I also already talked about, oh yeah. I think so, yes. I think that's true, yes. Um, since I also talked about um, cross products, let me show you that cross products are also examples of fell bundle C-star algebras. So in this situation, my group is a group. My fiber is, every fiber is the same fixed C-star algebra that my group acts on. And now my multiplication, maybe not surprisingly, again, I have to pay a price. So if I multiply these two things, I don't just multiply the elements in my C-star algebra. But really, I let wherever A1 sits over, G1, act on the second element before I multiply them. And similarly, I want the involution to not just be the involution in the C-star algebra, but I also want to encode the action. And if you do this, then the resulting um, C-star algebra of this bundle is actually the semi the cross product. Right. So all of these examples that I just have just given to you, you don't have to remember them. This was really just to motivate Fell bundles are massive, Fell bundle C-star algebras are a massive class of interesting C-star algebras. So they are really a, a good thing to look at. Okay, so now I'm in a position where I can give you our construction of a C-star analog of the Zappa Zep product. I remind you, um, the semi-direct product in group land becomes the cross product in C-star land. And so what does the Zappa Zep product become? That's my question. That's what I want to answer. And, oh, sorry, I should maybe go back one here. Um, this is just the repetition of the whole semi-direct product construction, right? Semi-direct product on the level of, of groups, which we then transferred into the land of C-star algebras just by copying the formulas, right? Did nothing else there. And now I want to bootstrap from there to Zappa Zep products. So what I did, I have two actions now on the group level and my multiplication and my inversion encode both of these actions, right? This is how my formula is now changed. And I tried to mention earlier that instead of having a C star algebra and constructing the cross product with the C star algebra, instead I now look at a Fell bundle over the group G. And instead of just having an action on my C star algebra, I have an action on my Fell bundle. And now I'm giving you the construction of this new symbol. So this thing here is newly defined. This is what I'm trying to get at. So I want to construct a new Fell bundle out of this old one that's sitting over G and that H is acting on. And this new Fell bundle is supposed to be one over the Zappa Zep product of the groups. So what I do is literally over every fiber of the form GH, I just take the original fiber over G. 
And the only thing that I've done here is tag tag on a tag on um, a copy of H to be able to distinguish between my different fibers. Otherwise, they're the same, right? So now I need for this to be a um, fell bundle. I need to give it a multiplication and a convolution. Down here, I still have the formulas that were um, given in the multiplication and involution on the cross product of C-star algebras. And remember, these were just modeled after the semi-direct product structure on my groups, which is what you see now. What I really want to model now, though, is the zappa -Zep product structure, right? That's what I actually want to model. And now notice, these are just the ones that are also in the blue box, right? So I'm trying to now give this thing the structure that encodes exactly the same two ways, exactly how the zappa -Zep product structure of the groups encoded both actions. So I want to do that here as well. So I literally take the formula and just replace Gs by Bs, right? So this time my Bs are elements of my Fell bundle. So here, if I take the product of two elements of my new Fell bundle, this new Fell bundle here, which um, B1 is over some G1 and H1 is just an element in my group H, and I multiply it with this other element, I copy the formula from here, I multiply in my original Fell bundle, my B1 with this new object. And here, just as I did up here in my Zappa Z product group, I have to pay a price. And that price is H acting on B2. So this little fancy triangle is a new action that I haven't given to you. So this is initial data that you have to start with. So just like your uh, here, your H and G act on each other, you need your H to actually act on your bundle. Just like in the um, cross product, you need H acting on your uh, sister algebra A, you, need, you needed to actually act on the bundle in a nice way. And then likewise, um, the other direction, I also need to pay a price for the second in the second half. And here G2 is where B2 sits over, uh, sits the fiber that B2 sits over and it acts on H1. And here is where I said, you remember maybe earlier, I said the problem with this new c star algebra construction is we kind of need the c star algebra A to act back on the group G. But that doesn't really make sense. So what I did instead is say, well, B2 sits over G. I know what fiber it sits over. And that element in G, I just let act on H, right? So this here really replaces the idea of c star algebra having to act on a group. Okay. So I have my new, newly defined multiplication and I do the exact same thing as I did before with my inversion. My uh, involution models the inversion and the formulas are again, exactly the same. Okay, so this is the construction. So you need to start with um, a Fell bundle B over, over group G. This group G allows us up a Z product with H. H not only acts on G, but also actually on the whole bundle. And then you can construct this new Fell bundle. And I here just say it has to be compatible. What I mean by that is, so this new action of H on the bundle has to be compatible with the original Zappa Z product structure on G. What I mean by that is it just has to fiber-wise behave like the original formula. So what I mean, for example, Remember, this was this condition that I needed for associativity on the level of groups. And I just need to have the exact same type of formula on the level of Fell bundles. So if I let H act on a product of two things in my Fell bundle, then it needs to be this type of product. And so you just take all the formulas that your H action on G has to satisfy and carry that over to the Fell bundle situation. And then, the theorem I already alluded to, if you are in the situation where H and G act on each other so that you get the Zappa Z product, and H also acts in this nice way on a Fell bundle over G, then this thing that I constructed on the last side actually is a Fell bundle, and it is a Fell bundle over the Zappa Z product. And we just called that the Zappa Z product of B and H. Okay, so just a repetition. This is just exactly the theorem one more time. We get a new Fell bundle over the Zappa Z product. And 
for people who have seen results like that in the past. So this really generalizes other constructions like the one by Kalisewski, Muley, Quigg, and Williams um, who have constructed semi-direct product cell bundles. So where you just have one action instead of two actions and you construct um, the R times variant. So ours really is, a, is an honest to goodness generalization of these, this known result or this known construction, I should say. Now, um, a slightly trivial example, but just to show you that this construction is not completely silly. If we start with the example of a Fell bundle that I gave earlier, where um, everything is just the complex numbers, multiplication is just multiplication of complex numbers, involution is just complex conjugation, so that the C-star algebra of that Fell bundle is just the group C-star algebra. So I have this little Fell bundle whose C-star algebra is the group C-star algebra then we immediately get a compatible one of these actions by just letting H act on G. It just does nothing to the complex numbers. The only thing it acts on is what fiber you live over. So it takes a complex number over the fiber of G and moves it to the fiber of HG. That's it, there's nothing else. And if you do this, then our construction of a, the Zappazep product for Fell bundles brings this line bundle over G to that over the um, Zappazep product. So this is what I'm trying to say here. You have the Fell bundle here, over the trivial Fell bundle over G, you take the Zappa Zep product with H and you get the trivial Fell bundle over the Zappa Zep product. In particular, the C-star algebra. So the Fell bundle C-star algebra of our new construction is exactly the group C-star algebra of the original Zappa Zep product. Okay, I would just want to recap what we've done because I know that I threw a lot of math at you. So I'll just remind you of what the whole point of this talk is. So the first thing is we start with group constructions. When you have no actions and you have two groups, you get the Cartesian product and get another group. When you have one action of H on G by automorphisms, you get a new group that encodes this action, which is the semi-direct product. And if you have two actions that are compatible in the sense like this formula that I needed for associativity, then you get this new group that encodes both actions, which is the double zip product. So that was just the algebraic bit. Then I move from there into the land of C-star algebras. I do the exact same thing. First, I start with no actions. I have some C-star algebra and some group H. And if I look at the C-star algebra of this data, it's the ten just the tensor product of these two things. If I have one action of H on A by say star automorphisms, I get the cross product. And if I have two actions, this time I now need to be on a Fell bundle then I get a new C-star algebra, namely the C-star algebra of this zappa -Zep product that we constructed a few slides ago. So this is just, like we just generalize constructions that are very well known, right? And the question that I, we, I still need to answer is, we know that, for example, the cross product here um, encodes some sort of information about this original action, but what does this new thing encode, right? What, why is this interesting? Is there any questions about just where I'm at at this point? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a, a, a perfect question. And the thing is that most of our theorems apply to situations that are very complicated. And so we are still working on, on good examples. So at the moment, what we have done is we've taken two constructions that already existed in the literature and brought them together in, um, in uh, what, what we've done. So our construction both generalizes the Zappa Zep product of two groups and generalizes a semi-direct product of a Fell bundle into group. But trying to find something that's out of these two examples, we haven't been able to do, just because there is many properties that we actually need to satisfy. Um, so this is that's a good question, and we're still working on it. Yes. Then you get a Zappa Zep product. Exactly, exactly. That's exactly right. Maybe that was just the question, yeah. 
So if you were just asking about the um, the algebraic part before the, we go to C star algebras, uh, then that's correct, exactly. If you have two groups uh, sitting inside of a big group and any element in the big group has a unique decomposition into a product of elements of these two subgroups, then you are a Zappa Z product. Exactly, that also, exactly, that's exactly right, yeah. Okay, so we want to check what our thing encodes, what types of thing, what does, does this actually measure? And so again, let me start with just the original situation that people already know, so cross products. So um, maybe I should just go to the next slide already. Um, so there is a theorem that tells you that certain types of representations of the action and certain on, and representations of the cross product belong together, right? So they are in one-to-one -one correspondence with each other. The representations here on the left are these covariant representations of the action. And they always consist of a representation of the c star algebra and a unitary representation of the group that is acting on the c star algebra. And this covariance condition is that if you want to move the unitary representation past the c star algebraic representation, you have to pay a price, right? That's the type of... Um, representations of the action that you that the semi the cross product encodes. And so this old theorem says that every covariant representation can be integrated to a cross product representation and you can even disintegrate. So if your cross product has a representation, you will always be able to decompose it into a representation of the group, a representation of the Seaster algebra, and the two have some nice property, this covariant representation property. Okay, so this is a known theorem. So these types of representations of the action are exactly the representations of the cross product. And then our thing does a very similar thing. So I again take a step back and I define a new type of covariant representation for the setting that we are in. So we start with our H acting on our fell bundle B in this nice way. And we start with the representation of our fell bundle and the representation of the group. So not much has changed. But again, instead of just paying the price when I move H over B, I also pay a price that I moved B over H, right? So my, uh, the only difference to the formula before is that again, the right action comes in. And then as you might now expect, the new theorem is that these type of covariant representations can be integrated to representations of the C-star algebra of this new fell bundle that we constructed. And you can also disintegrate them. So they are again in a one-to-one -one correspondence with each other. Now, another just maybe hoop to doodle because I myself haven't really worked with um, C star blends um, in the form of Ruri Excel, but other people are very interested in them. So some known result from the past that is only true on, on the level of groups and groupoids, so not C star algebra fell bundles is that if you have um, these two uh, groups acting on each other so that their Zappa Zep product makes sense, then the collect the C-star algebra of the first group and the C-star algebra of the second group together with the C-star algebra of the Zappa Zep product is a C-star blend. So um, this, this guy here is basically determined um, a lot by these other two C-star algebras. So they're blended together as the name, name tells you, right? And we generalize this theorem to our setting. So if you are in the situation um, where you can construct the Zappa Z product of a Fell bundle with a group H, then the Fell bundle C star algebra and the group C star algebra of H um, together with the new Fell bundle C star algebra is a C star blend, at least if your fab fibers are unital. So, um, um, So in this situation, I so yes, you're, you're, you're right. It's a good point. So I, at this point, moved even to group points. So yes, if you, um, if you want to just think of groups, then the unit that I'm talking about is just the unit fiber, nothing else, just the single unit fiber that you have for groups. You're correct. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wrong direction. Okay, so I have a little bit of time left. 
So I'm going to show you some theorems that we, some additional theorems that we proved about this construction. And so there, I've only had a bazillion different actions floating around in this talk already. So I'll just have to introduce a few more. Um, but I'm trying that I'm trying to make sure that at least my colors and my the way that my things point make as clear as possible what's acting on what. Okay, so we start with two groups acting on a space. So I'm going very far away from the situation that I actually care about. So I'm in a very well-known setting. And there's uh, this theorem of greens that if you have these two actions, one on the left and one on the right of, of the space, which are free, proper, and they commute with each other, then the quotient spaces themselves, so the quotient with respect to one group or the other group, um, also has actions. These also have actions always with of the other remaining group. And another part of this theorem is that the, C the cross products that you get from um, these groups acting on spaces, so here you just have the cross product of in the C-star in C-star land, these two C-star algebras are Morita equivalent. So this is a well-known old result. This was generalized to the situation where instead of just having two groups acting on a space, you, they actually act on a groupoid. So we start with two groups H and K acting on a groupoid G, this time by automorphism. So it's the only thing I've changed. So notice that if you don't know your groupoids, this is a more general situation. Topological spaces are examples of groupoids. Right? So again, I need free, proper, and commuting. And then now the statement is the quotients that I get from these two actions are actually also groupoids, again, with actions. The groupoid G itself is an equivalence of the semi-direct product groupoids I can construct from these actions. And so in particular, you can now throw a big theorem at this construction you get a strong Morita equivalence between their C-star algebras. So the C-star algebras of, uh, of these semi-direct product group points. And I said in the beginning, I'm only gonna talk about groups. If you're uncomfortable with groupoids, think of these as groups, right? So these were the more, most interesting things happen when you're, when, you're, um, when you're a groupoid, but groups are examples of groupoids. And well, you see, semi-direct products everywhere. So I guess it's clear what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna to try to take another step back and replicate all of these things just for the setting that I'm interested in. So we're for two-way actions. So what this means is I take just three groupoids. If you want, again, you could take groups for the moment. I let everything act on the thing in the middle. So I have H and K act on G but also G acts in the other direction. Um, I here say uh, compatibly. So this is just, again, this associativity condition. So I need these actions to, to give um, a zappa zap product construction. So I need to have this compatible condition, this associ associativity condition. I need the, them free and proper. And commuting, the two actions being commutative, is an R4 action, it's not quite good enough. So not only do I need that the H and K action commute, but they have to satisfy a little bit more, which if the G action on K is trivial, is just commutation. So we are still in a generalization of the previous setting. And if you have that, then maybe you can guess what happens. Again, not only do I have group points with actions, but also the quotients act backwards. And they are still compatible, so I can still construct a zappa zap product. Then G is an equivalence between the semi the zappa zap product of these group points. And in particular, the C star algebras of these constructions are Morita equivalent. So the theorem is really an honest to goodness generalization of the one before. Now, I kept saying you can think of groups. I should be mentioning though that um, oh, I went backwards, that here the condition that I'm free 
does ask for G to not have a trivial unit space. So you want G to at least be a space. It can't really be a group. So G being a group is not a good example, but H and K can be groups and G can just be a space and this still works. Okay, so we generalized um, uh, a pretty, pretty big well-known theorem with our construction. Now I've done all of this for um, group points now, but what I actually was interested in was the Zappa Zep product construction in C star land. So the Zappa Zep product of a Fell bundle with a group, not just of two, two groups. So that's the next step. So I move one level ahead. So we start with a Fell bundle over G and we have some groups. And again, I'm gonna give you the theorems that already existed in the literature. If H and K act freely, properly and commuting on my bundle, then the bundle itself is an equivalence of these semi-direct product bundles. So first of all, I can make sense of quotients and get another Fell bundle. And then I can take the semi-direct product bundle with the respective other group. And these two Fell bundles are equivalent. And similar to the groupoid example on the last slide, equivalence of Fell bundles is something interesting because it tells you something about their C-star algebras. I'm gonna repeat that in a second. And we took that and generalized that to our situation. So go away from groups and go to group points and go away from just one action, but to two actions. So suppose you have H and K acting on, on B and in this compatible sense, so that um, uh, the group G or group point G that B lands over also acts on the other two. Again, freely, properly, and in tune, so this um, generalization of being commutative, commutative actions, then your the bundle you started with is an equivalence between these Zappa Zep product bundles. And here I should have used these fancy bow ties that I showed earlier, but I seem to have forgotten that. So um, we again generalized this um, kalisewski muley quick williams result of equivalence of semi-direct product bundles to Zappa Zep product bundles. And as I alluded to earlier, one of the reasons why you might care about a result of equivalence of Fell bundles is that if you have a nice enough harm measure on the group point that your bundle sits over, then in particular, the C-star algebras of these bundles are Morita equivalent. So for example, they have the same K-theory, right? So Morita equivalent is an, is an interesting notion for C-star algebras. And that would be it. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions in the audience or line? I have a quick question. Um, can you go back to your last slide? When you say equivariance, the hard measure, what exactly does this mean? Um, so you need that um, if you, um, let, so you, you for, for your hard, system over your group point. Um, if you look at the measure over the unit U of some set, then this must be the same as the measure over the moved unit. So H times U of H inverse of the set, something like that. So if, whether you want to call it equivariant or invariant, I'm not quite sure, but. There are examples. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty so for example, if you're, so the, the simple example is if you're et al, yeah. then um, you're, it automatically works. You don't ah, have to assume anything. So counting measure will always have this. Makes sense. Yeah. Questions? <laughs> Can you also tell me maybe what FL bundle equivalence is? Ah, yes. Okay. So um, that's a good point. It's very similarly defined to the equivalence of group points um, or Morita equivalent on an algebraic level. So um, you have a, a thing that is being acted on on both sides and um, uh, you have um, um, these, these two actions have to commute with one another so wherever it makes sense. Um, you have to have, it needs to be an upper semi-continuous bundle over the original groupoid to start with. Um, and then the actions 
um, the inner product has to be equivariant with respect to these actions so that they can be pulled out. And in the end, um, it, the, the conditions of that Fell bundle equivalence look exactly the same as the conditions of a groupoid equivalence, just on a, on a Fell bundle level. And this is a construction by uh, Julia Renault Williams, I think, if not mistaken. Yeah, I think maybe what you're getting at is that our theorem, for example, um, tells you things about and the known results that um, the cross product is a good, a Morita equivalent, um, equivalent, a Morita equivalent substitute of a quotient. So um, the cross product construction in Theaster land is trying to fix the fact that quotient spaces by bad actions don't behave very well. And so you move to the cross product as a Morita equivalent substitute. And this is being recovered by that as an example. So if you let um, H be trivial, then here you have a quotient B mod K, and that's then equivalent to K times B, right? So this is what I'm trying, I was trying to get at just now. Questions? Anybody? Okay, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, what is a C-star blend? Yeah, so you, uh, that's a very good question. Um, so you have uh, two sub sister algebras that sit inside of a bigger sister algebra and they're the, are, are included in, and the uh, image of the tensor product of these two maps generate the big algebra. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's what that is. There might also be some, some other thing about how much they commute with each other, but uh, yeah. I think that should be true by uh, as an example of, of the theorem that I showed earlier exactly. I think that should be true. Uh, okay, if there's no more questions, then let's uh, thank Anne again for a very lovely talk. And next week we have Edward Belalta coming to talk about soft elements in C-star algebras. So see you then.